A roofing contractor donated two new roofs to a charity whose camp for disabled children and adults was preparing to find the necessary funds for those new roofs. Now, thanks to the donation, the camp will redirect the money for other needed services, saying this will change lives. Hi there. Welcome back to another episode of our podcast, Airing It Out with AirVent. My name is Paul Shelsey. I host AirVent's Attic Ventilation Ask the Expert seminars offered every winter to residential roofing professionals all across North America since 1998. It was Patriot Roofing in Gig Harbor, Washington that donated those two new roofs. The roofs went to Camp Stand By Me, operated by Easter Seals Organization in Vaughan, Washington. Mike Talpai is the general manager at Patriot Roofing, and he's our guest today. Welcome to our podcast, Mike. Well, thanks for having me, Paul. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Mike, you reached out to me and asked if AirVent would be interested in participating in the Camp Stand By Me project by donating two roof mount power fans to help cool the attics. In fact, you coordinated the donation of materials, time, and resources from quite a number of businesses in the building materials trades, all benefiting the Camp Stand By Me project. We all thought that was awesome at AirVent. Mike, how did you get involved with Camp Stand By Me? Well, uh, they're part of the Eastern Seals organization, and they knew that they needed some roofs. Uh, Two buildings in particular, they were tarped. They reached out to different roofing companies to get estimates. And uh, the way that uh, you know we, we do donations throughout the year, so our estimators are the ones that bring them to the table. So Paul uh, Rollette, he um, was the estimator that was there. He brought it to me. We kind of took a look at it showed it to our owner, Scott, and it, it, it met all the criteria. It was the, it would be the largest donation that we would have ever even thought of doing. Um, and uh, that's that's how we got started with it. So we you know, took a look at it, reached out to him and said, we're interested in taking this on as a as a volunteer project. And and, you know, the rest is history. They they're very appreciative. Yes. If, if you don't mind me sharing your email with our listeners, Mike. I'd like to do that shortly after Mike confirmed that all the donations contributing to the two new roofs were in place. He emailed all of us the following note. I'm excited, guys. It was shared with us that the Easter Seals organization knew the repairs were needed for the roofs on the two housing units, and they were in the process of identifying ways to pay for the project. The donations from all of you, in their words, will change lives by allowing them to redirect the funds to helping disabled individuals and families. And then Mike ended his email with, it doesn't get any better than this, guys. It doesn't get any better than that, Mike. Thank you for sharing that feedback from Camp Stand By Me and the Easter Seals organization. I got to believe that feedback like that just fuels you to want to continue to try and give back to the community to help those in need, Mike. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, it, it really does. It's, it's a humbling experience. Um, and, and I don't know, uh, are you okay if we, if I read the list real quick of the participants? You sure can. Okay. All right. So, you know, we, in this list, you'll notice there's competitors, so this this is elevated past competition. This is towards doing the right thing for the community. So you've got Convoy. You know they donated a hundred squares of landmark triple laminate shingles. One one of the, the top tier shingles. They they said, hey, we're in. You know we'll deliver a hundred squares to you. Where do you want them? When do you want them? It just blew me away. Um, Mark Ivers from CertainTeed um, was instrumental in, in putting everybody together. He helped me, you know, do all this. And um, Beacon said, we'll take care of everything other than the shingles. 
And then ABC jumped in there and said they'll do the gutters and downspouts and gutter protection. So, you know, here, here we have three competitors that are coming together for a common cause. Um, and then we found out here recently that there's the scope of work after we dug into the roof you know, for prepping it um, is it, it's the scope of work is expanding. Let's put it that way. And we needed additional plywood. And, it, and the ABC raised their hand immediately and said, we've got the plywood covered. So um, that was pretty impressive. Velux donated 12 two by six skylights. You, of course, AirVent donated the ventilation. Reed Electric here locally is going to donate the installation of the fans. Eagle View donated all the uh, imagery. Uh, the credit union, the local credit union, Kitsap Credit Union, has an, a volunteer arm. So they've rented a van. They've got T-shirts. And a whole army of those guys are showing up to volunteer to do this project and any other project for the day that the camp needs. Uh, they volunteer for everything. They're bringing our hard hats and gloves. So it's uh, pretty neat to see somebody even outside the industry yes. jump in to help the community. And then, of course, Patriot. So we're doing the coordination, design, uh, all the labor, food, refreshments, stuff like that. It's It's been great. Thank you for sharing that. It's impressive. Yeah. It's really impressive. Mike, how, how long has Patriot Roofing been giving back to its community and is it always a new roof? Yes, it's 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 always a roof. What so historically, we're not we haven't been looking for any type of pat on the back or acknowledgement. So my estimators are out there. They're looking for medically fragile children where the families need help. That has been the litmus test, and that's where it is. So we do two, sometimes more roofs a year. And they're coming to us for a bid. We identify it. We talk about it. And then we just show up and put a new roof on and leave. There's no advertising. There's no talking about it. We, you know, the family knows and we know. And, and if the family needs help, it's nobody else's business but theirs. Um, this Easter Seals one is a little bit different because it's for an organization. So this is the first time that we're doing a donation for a roof that is – um, you know it, that we that we're talking about. So this this is a first for us, Mike. If I may clarify, when it's an individual home, uh, were they going through the process to actually pay for a new roof? Yes. Wow. And then you just take it from there, and it's it's just free and it's done and you're gone. It's done. We give them a, a bill of sale that zero it's, due. It's it's done. Yeah. That's. That's I, I got to believe that's a special moment when that's all over, too. Thank you for yeah. sharing that, Mike. Mike, yeah. how, how, how can someone listening to us right now get started giving back to his or her local community? Do, do you have a suggestion that could kickstart the process for a first timer? Um, I, I do. It's it's a mindset of the organization. So you have to have everybody you know, in the boat, rowing in the right, same direction that we're giving back. If, if you don't give back to your community, uh, shame on you because it's your community that's, that's creating your success. Um, so, you know, you just talk to your, talk to your staff, talk to your estimators, your installers, say, this is the direction I want to go. This is the program I want to start up. And, and we're going to go from point A to point B and we're going to take some families with us. Um, it, it, it all starts under your own roof. I know there are many organizations worthy of people's donation of time and resources. Do you have causes or groups that are particularly important to you, Mike? Now you've already shared uh, families that have medically challenged situations and that, that, that may be the end of it, but are, are there organizations in general that you've got your eye on? Well, we, we yes. Yeah, so we, like we do um, swing for a soldier. We, we do, we donate all of that. We're we're a major sponsor for the Bremerton Submarine Veterans Association. So we do donations all through, and that's more cash uh, associated. Um, sure. So we're heavily involved in the communities. We're um, Little League. We've got the you know donations for Little League and in, in Gig Harbor, um, all that stuff. We're we're heavily linked in the community that way, um, but specifically talking about putting new roofs on that's where we were going for the medically fragile sure Th thank you mike N not to be mr negative mike because this is a very positive 
conversation. But but if someone listening thinks this sounds a bit overwhelming or time consuming and is thinking perhaps I have my hands pretty full with taking care of day to day business matters. Any guidance for that person, Mike, to help overcome such barriers to giving back to the community? Um, yes. Well, for one, budget it. So if you want to, you know, if, even if you don't have the group identified, put in next year's budget $5,000 for donations. Budget it in. So now that's taken care of because that's always a barrier. Then um, next is like for the for the medically fragile that we were discussing, um, we run it like a normal job. So it's it doesn't matter if we're going to get paid at the end or not. It is put into the, the the program, the shoot, and it goes through a normal process, and then we just don't collect a check at the end. So it's really not tasking anybody in their job or their role on something they're not used to doing. Um, and so uh, when I was talking about everybody working together, it, it used to be that we would even do it on a Monday through Friday and have it as a normal job. When the installers saw these coming through, our production department came to us and said, wait a minute, we want to be involved in this on a donation level itself. Please don't put this into our normal work week. Please schedule them for Saturdays and we will all come on our Saturday and we will donate our time. We were used to pay them for doing that and they came to us and said, we don't want the money anymore. So that's when I knew that we were all in the in the boat going the same direction. That's fantastic. But yeah, that's, that's how I keep from being overloaded is I don't I don't put it in a way that I, you know, to set myself up for that. Um, now, having that said that, this is the first major deal with the Easter sales. So, you know, and, and putting this coalition together, normally it's just us. So that was time consuming. So if you're going to take a project on of this nature, as the manager, you have to know that, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put some time into this and, and, and enjoy it. Don't, I don't look at it as overwhelming. I look at it as something that I'm enjoying doing, but there is time involved. You have to admit that. My camp stand by me sounds pretty awesome from what I researched. Since 1974, the camp provides camping getaways for children and adults with disabilities so they can experience all the joys of camp life without limitation. They swim, canoe, play sports, do arts and crafts. They grow hot dogs, toast marshmallows. <laughs> it's, some pretty, it's some pretty fun stuff, Mike, from what I researched. You know what? Easter Sale is an amazing organization. Um, they have different because because when you're dealing with disabled children and disabled adults, uh, it's a challenge for the family. And there's there's no cookie cutter way to support families like that. So they have different age groups, um, you know, all the way up, you know, 30 and above is one age group and down. So and they have different programs where they can take a they can take an individual for the week. One, they have one-on-one -on -one staff. The staff's amazing. Um, and they have nurses and medical on staff. And they, you, know, you can drop off your family member if that's what you choose to do yeah. for a period. It all depends on the, the level um, you know, the, uh, the, for the individual that's coming, you know, what type of care they need. Um, are they severe? Are they less severe in their disabilities? And they can handle it all. Um, they have respite weekends where, um, you know, the, the state helps out some families, disabled families, what they call respite hours. So you can bring somebody into the home so that the family can have a, a four or an eight hour break one day to go do something and know that that the, that their loved one's being taken care of. Well, you can take that person, um, that individual to the camp for the day and they can just have a blast. And then, you know, it's just uh, an amazing organization and I, I don't think they get enough credit for what they do and I will say that it, I've learned all of this since I started this project so I was not I, I, I really other than seeing their I, I never donated to them I never did anything I just I, I would hear of Easter Seals I never took the time to do what you did and look at their website and say okay what are these guys about which you know it's it's hard to admit, but it's the truth. And then once I look at what they do, I'm like, oh my god, these guys, they're amazing. And they wear their heart on their sleeve. They're, it's just you know, yeah. Mike, in fairness, I, I I chose to research them because you reached out to us 
and this podcast <laughs> topic. So you you impacted me as well. So thank you for that. And, and if you don't mind, Mike, I know we touched upon this a little bit about the extent of this particular project. Just for our listeners, I just wanted to revisit that you coordinated the participation of nine different businesses, but by, by my count, plus your own Patriot Roofing. So that's that's ten moving parts for camp for the Camp Stand by Me project. And I, I know you said, Mike, your, your mindset has to be when you enter something like this, you're going, you're in it for some time. It's going to be a time commitment. But would you would you mind for our listeners to help them not feel in over their heads about attempting something similar? in terms of coordinating something like this? Uh, as far as how much time I have into it? Type of yeah, thing? and just you know, what, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so uh, time-wise, um, uh, it was mostly just phone calls initially. Now that we're within two weeks of doing it, I'm putting maybe an hour a day just to make sure and just checking that, you know, everybody's in. And it's it's mostly emails and phone calls. So it's it's – just time and it's just keeping your eye on the ball and and not letting it affect everything else you're doing so right. if you go into it and say hey i'm gonna i'm gonna take an hour a day and follow up on this topic it it's it's great and i can i can personally tell you that for as much time as i put into it for what i've gotten out of it um i would put more time into it um it's just been so rewarding for me on a personal level I just feel good about it. I mean, just really good. I feel really good about it. Thank you, Mike, for sharing that. Appreciate that very much. As we wrap up this episode, Mike, is there is there anything that you'd like to add for our listeners, either about giving back to the community or or anything at all, really, that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, just just do it, okay? And then you will be surprised. I am... Like I said, I feel good, but I, but I'm humbled. All right. So you talk about that. There's ten different organizations that have come together to make this happen, but but that's ten wonderful organizations. Um, and and I know this is your podcast, but you know I, I, you're one of them. I mean, when I reached out to you, Paul, you're like, yeah, we're in. You know, what what do we need to do? The, you know, Airvent is excited to be a part of this. And you're one of the other nine that responded in that way. Um, it could without without Airvent, without Beacon, Certainty, Convoy, all the rest of the list. ABC. I don't want to leave anybody out. No. Uh, that uh, <laughs> okay. you know that that uh, you know it, it wouldn't have gotten anywhere. It would have been a phone call, and instead it was, let's do this. You know, and and sometimes it just takes somebody to grab the reins and see where it takes you. So thank you if you're thinking about reins. stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks for jumping on, jumping in the boat with me and going and rowing. It's uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I know I've said it, but I, I can't convey enough that it's uh, very rewarding. And if, if you jump into it, you will not regret it. And it's the right thing to do. These organizations need our help. COVID, COVID really hurt Camp Stand By Me because they couldn't take anybody in. So for a nonprofit organization that still has to take care of it and maintain the buildings and keep the lights on, you know, these organizations are out there and they need our help and they're they're really worth helping. Thank you, Mike. I, I hope this podcast and this conversation uh, takes. Uh, has the ability to impact others to, to get involved like you have at Patriot. And I, I want to thank you very much for being our guest, Mike. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in Camp Stand By Me on behalf of Airvent with Patriot Roofing and the uh, the others, <clears throat> excuse me, and on behalf of Airvent, the industry, and homeowners, thank you, Mike, for your time today. Oh, thank you, Paul. We really appreciate it. There are a variety of ways to give back to our communities, small ways and big ways, and they can each make a life-changing impact. Well, that wraps up this episode. Please leave a review on YouTube or whatever platform you use to listen to this episode. Be sure to let us know if there's a topic you'd like us to cover in future episodes. 
Maybe you'd like to be a guest one day, like Mike was a guest. Drop us a note on the podcast page of our website, airvent.com. You can also reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And please come back for more Airing It Out with Airvent. I'm Paul Shelsey. Thanks for listening.